Steve Rose, what's the one guitar that got away? I'll tell you the one guitar that got away, and I still think about it to this day. There was a a uh, non or uh, is it reverse fire? Non reverse firebird, the one that's not the regular one. It looks more like you know it goes this way, not this way. There was a non reverse firebird um, at a at a guitar store in Stockholm that I saw years ago. And the whole thing was gold, like a, like a gold top. It was like gold top paint. And I'd never seen, seen one like this. The headstock, the neck, everything. Uh, and it was so beautiful, but it was in Stockholm. So it was really, really expensive. And I remember I promised myself, if I come, next time I come back here on tour, if this is here, I'm going to buy it. And I came back a few years later on tour, and it was still there. And I still didn't buy it because it was even more expensive by then. And then I came back another time and it was gone. So that one to me, I really should have bought that guitar. It was beautiful and unlike any other uh, non-reverse Firebird I've ever seen. And as probably many of you know, I have a fondness for the, that particular shape and that particular guitar. Okay, Keef5150. This is a question that, that uh, it, it makes, it's, it's timely for me. Uh, it says here, are you Foo guys using modelers or real amps on your current tour? We are using real amps on stage, but I have been messing quite a bit with, um, with, with amp modelers lately. I've been touring in my solo thing with a Strymon Iridium. On this show, I generally use uh, a Line 6 Helix. <laughs> That's all Helix right there. Um, I just got a Fender Tone Master, you know, their new uh, amp modeling setup. And that thing sounds really good, too, although I haven't done a gig with it. And, um, and, and I also just got a, a Neural Quad Cortex, which is fantastic. So, yeah, um, I like them. I think it's great. I don't know that I would use one in Foos necessarily because we have like a great crew and a big stage and it sounds good to have real amps. But for my crummy little van tours, I'm amp modeler all the way. It's easy and it's consistent. And then in a related question, Sarah Moores asks, is the trend towards silent stages, digital modelers, in-ears, etc.?" neutering the electric guitar as we know it that is a great question i think didn't joe bonamassa just say something about that recently didn't he have a didn't he have a quote about that it probably is in some regard but it's also i don't know i think it's really fun and kind of inspiring i'm i thought the in-ear thing as you can see i've got in-ears on right now how much can you see the detail can you see the arsenal logo on my in-ears is that like i don't know if, if that shows through on this video arsenal these are my special arsenal in-ears. Anyway, I fought the in-ear thing for a long time, and then I gave into it. And honest to God, if you have to sing on a stage with a bunch of loud stuff, you can't beat this. It's the greatest thing in the world. And I really like the, uh, the, uh, the amp modeler thing. But, you know, as guitar players, you sort of you bounce around. Like one year you're playing a Fender Princeton, then you're playing a Marshall, then you're using an amp modeler and you're like, oh, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened. And then six months later, you go back to a Mesa Boogie. You know what I mean? It's just, I don't know. I like constantly tweaking and changing. I, I think yeah, there's a lot of different ways to approach it and it just kind of depends on what you're doing or what you're looking for. But I, 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 the silent stage thing is especially weird for guests. Because if you've ever been on the side of a stage that has no amps, it's fucking weird, man. It's, it is definitely unnatural. So uh, you're probably right. It's probably neutering us all. Who the hell knows? Anyway, 